Welcome back to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, we're gonna make a pair of St. Patrick's Day placemats. You will need two greens and a white and some batting. So let's get started. All right, so we have everything cut. You will need four light greens, two inch by width of fabric strips, four dark green, two inch by width of fabric strips, four one and a half by 12 and a half inch strips from the white for sashing, two six and a half inch squares, this is where the stem is going to go, and nine two and a half inch squares. You will also need a 16 by 21 inch piece of fabric for the backing of each placemat and a piece of batting 16 by 21 for each placemat. You'll need to download the stem template and you'll need some fusible web and a scrap of the dark green. So we're going to trace and cut and make the stems as fusible web. And then you'll also need to cut the strips for binding. And that is four two and a half inch strips and I'm going to cut them from the dark green. And that is everything we will need for the placemats. So first step before we start sewing is to get our stems ready. And to do that, you're gonna use a piece of fusible web and the stem template, which I will link below. And you're gonna trace it onto the paper side of the fusible web following the manufacturer's instructions. I recommend using a Sharpie X ultra fine point pen because the line it makes is the same thickness as your scissor blades. So therefore you don't have to guess, you know, on a thicker line on which side to cut. So I, this is my favorite. It also doesn't smear or smudge. It dries very quickly and it works perfect. So again, these are stems. So if they're not perfect, that's okay. Nothing in nature is perfect. So we're going to trace two of these because we're going to make two placemats. And once you've done this, you roughly cut them out about an eighth of an inch outside the line. Um, in this case, I'm just, you know, using my rotary blade and just cutting them out pretty rough. And then following your instructions, following the instructions for the brand you have, you're going to iron them onto the wrong side of the fabric. And then we're going to cut them out on the drawn lines. That'll seal all these edges and glue and we won't have frayed edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and press these and get these cut out and then we can move on to sewing. All right, so we have our stems cut out and we're gonna iron them down on the fabric, but I'm gonna wait until I get the rest of the block done and then we'll position them the way we want them to look. So those are ready to go for now. Now we're gonna need to sew these into strip sets and we need two strip sets to cut all of the um, units for the shamrocks. So there's one and then I'll just repeat it and sew another one. So let me go ahead and get these strip sets sewn and then I'm going to show you how we're going to cut them into units. All right, so we have our two strip sets sewn and I'm going to put them, there's the two, I'm going to put them right sides together with a dark fabric on top and a light fabric on the bottom and I'm going to align them I'm going to, I pressed everything to the dark so these will nest together. So I'm just sort of straightening out the seam, making sure that these two pieces are aligned. And I'm going to show you why in a second here. So you need to cut two inch units from these strips. And we need to cut 32 of them. Alright, so I know we need to cut 32 of these. I'm going to put them like that. So now I'm cutting four at a time. One, two, three, four. Dumping, I'm trimming off the end. And then I'm turning it around. And again, these are two inch strip sets. And we need 32, so I need to cut eight, eight stacks. So now I can just take these over to the sewing machine and sew them like this. And we'll need two pairs 
and that will sew together into one segment of the shamrock. So we need three per placemat. And then for the side borders here, and note that this would go like this and this would go like that. For the side borders, we're gonna sew them short end to short end, flip it open, and there is our side border. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything sewn together and then I'll come back and show you how to add the white elements. All right, so we're gonna do flip and sew on each of three of the corners to create the shamrock petal. And to do that, you're gonna take a square and you're going to use, um, I'm using a folded corner clipper and I align the top of the ruler, the side of the ruler, and the bottom of the ruler and draw a line. Now when I go to sew this, this line will go on my quarter inch guide. Normally, they would have you mark a piece from corner to corner, but then you're only using two points to reference it. So I do recommend using a folded corner clipper ruler or a 45 degree ruler with the quarter inch built in. And again, side, 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 and then draw the line. And you're gonna have a much more accurate flip and sew when you sew these. So I'm gonna mark all of these and then I'm gonna show you how we sew them together. All right, so to do this flip and sew, once you've got your squares marked, you're going to sew them onto the three uh, corners, leaving one corner open. And you will see I sew from end to end and I use the drawn line with my quarter inch seam. Then you can either just cut out the white, leaving a seam allowance, and flip this up, or you can cut both layers. It's really up to you, just be consistent whichever way you do it. And then you press out all of your corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on these. All right, now that I have these done, they go together like this to create the petals of the clover. And now we have one of these and one of these. And I'm gonna go ahead and iron this onto the white squares. And I'm gonna use green or fill thread and finish the edges. You can use any thread. I just really love Aurifil because it's low lint. It's really easy to work with. And I have lots of colors. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna line that there, press this, and finish these edges. Then when I sew this, those two edges will be caught in the seam and look like it's coming right out of the clover. So when I finish the edges on this, I will finish this and this, but not these two smaller edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my stems and then we're gonna be ready to assemble our clovers and our placements. All right, so we're ready to sew these together to make the shamrock. We'll sew these two together and these two together. Just make sure that the white corners are all on the outside and it's just green on the inside. So I'll get these sewn together and I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll be ready to assemble our placemats. All right, so we have the shamrock sewn. Now to make a placemat, you sew one white strip on either side. And then one checkerboard on either side. And then we'll be ready to layer and quilt these. So I'm going to go ahead and get this sewn and I will bring it back. All right, so here we go. These are our two placemats all ready to be quilted and bound. Um, but you can see I did one with the clover going to the left and one with the clover going to the right. So we're going to go ahead and get these quilted and finished off. But uh, you can quilt them however you'd like. I will probably outline this and maybe do something all over in here. Definitely outline the stem and again, something down here. Uh, but they're super fun, super easy. The pattern is written for two at a time. So you can make two, four, six, eight, ten, however many you need. All right, here are our St. Patty's Day placement, all quilted and bound and done. Uh, Monica quilted little shamrocks and vines all over it. Uh, again, this fabric is from davidtextilesinc.com. The pattern, step-by-step -step pattern and uh, supply list will be available in the David Textiles blog. So if you go to their website and then click on blog, you should find this all posted and ready to go. Uh, this was done in collaboration with them for their blog post. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like seeing these little simple projects, just let me know in the comments below, especially if there's one that you'd like to see me do. And as always, I thank you for watching.